Hi and welcome back to another linmob.net video um, which is going to be a short look at some pine cone distributions only some not all because there aren't just too many and post market OS so it took me a while to uh, get even to producing this second video if you want to call what I do here producing and um, that was because of well, life and um, there's really it's tough to to find something to focus on with the pine cone because there's so many distributions and they're all progressing step by step little by little and i really don't want to point out uh, what's not working i want to be more positive so what did i do um, i tweeted a lot uh, at linbob blog is my twitter handle for all pine phone and mobile linux related stuff and i set up my blog again at github pages the old content isn't migrated yet i don't know whether i will get to that but at some point it will be done because well you know when you have the chance to get a look at all that old content again you want to fix some grammar and typos on the way and that will take some time so this is what it looks like um i've managed to put out four posts yet um two on the pine phone one link in my first video uh, one about the hardware which i'm well quite satisfied with overall i've heard that some people have issues with it and yeah i fortunately have none and one about memorized on the bright four which uh, is maybe an interesting read so um all, but what i'm especially proud of is that i set up a resources page um i will put a link on it to how to how to fork it and how to um do a pull request so that uh, you can help me with that if you want to because pull requests are welcome because there's just so much um, and I can't do it all although I will try to improve this page uh, bit by bit so it may, may eventually branch out into multiple pages because as you can see here hardware software and then there's a history section down below I couldn't resist doing that because I always like old devices because they well handling them makes me feel younger again yeah that's how it is when you get old well but let's get to corrections first of all there are these kill switches on the pine phone which are behind the battery compartment and um, well, let me open it once again so and I said something wrong about the pine phone kill switch as was pointed out correctly in comments there's one that is for the headphone and it doesn't switch the headphone jack off what it instead does it switches the headphone to be a port to be a debug port so that you can um, over serial connection you art uh, debug for example kernel or something I guess if you're just a user you will never need that except maybe if you have really some kind of strange issue and you want to help people debug it so yeah now next up ub ports is quite improved they uh, made it so that they now have support for the crust firmware which helps with battery saving they say that they've measured like about 14 hours of standby time by now this is the third release and there are some updates available apparently because i'm not constantly using ub ports um, but generally i think um, they are improving bit by bit um, I was running the developer channel for a bit or development channel um, I 
think it's development channel. Yeah, it's development channel. And um, well, you know, if you're on that channel, you get the new improvements first, but sometimes uh, the scaling is off or um, something else doesn't work. So uh, my, I think on one build the keyboard didn't work. So I well, run that if you want to, but um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for everybody um, because it's for development and the stable channel gets approved eventually and yeah so there are many apps on UB ports and um, well, most of them are quite useful unfortunately the only uh, Jabber or XMPP plus a Waymo client there is is this which is a port of the converse javascript uh, thingy and um, yeah that's not really what you would want to use but it's better than nothing and uh, if you're into matrix uh, fluffy shed is as far as i'm concerned the best client of any uh, mobile linux distribution there is um, i tried i haven't set it up here but um, I, I try to uh, build it as a snap uh, for ARM so that I could install it on uh, another uh, d distribution for the Pine phone, but failed. So, but that may be just me being unfamiliar with snapcraft.yaml. But yeah, so that, that's something to point out. And otherwise, well, there are plenty of apps and um, they are in active development, as you could see by the updates. There because I last booted into UB ports I don't know like two days ago maybe and again three updates so there's some action there and I think all the issues are going to be ironed out soon then there is Salesforce OS um, the Pine phone is not a part of the official Salesforce X program yet maybe it will never be maybe it will um, I don't think Yola has committed to anything there yet and um, I don't I think you heard that noise there that's a little audio hissing that happens every now and then and um, when I first tried to use this I managed to turn the screen dark with the brightness slider by because it was dark in my room and yeah you know it happened and I couldn't turn it on again because then the brightness was totally off and well, there are some apps. You have two app stores with the Yola store, which requires an account, and Storman, which is a front end to, I think it's called Open Repos. And, um, well, this is RPM based. You can also go ahead and install the open source uh, Gla Gla Glacier or Glacier UX on this Sailfish base. Unfortunately, when I did that, I couldn't really do anything because the screen would lock up um, before I couldn't unlock it. So that was really bad for me. But Sailfish itself is, um, well, mostly fine. Let's start the browser here. Oh, see, now it doesn't react. So it isn't really fine, apparently. Um, it's certainly buggy and yeah, there is no option in the installer for the 1.2 ref yet so it certainly uh, isn't optimized yet but i think this has great potential because um this is during this recording is the first time it locks up like that before it kind of worked yeah so that's that mobian which is uh debian Based and it's based on the next release of Debian, which is called Bullseye, and it's going to be Debian 11. And I guess it's scheduled for later this year. It's uh, running the Fosh UI developed by Purism, as you can see here. And um, yeah, default passcode is 1234, and it comes with a lot of software pre installed, um, including Fractal, which is a matrix client. And sound recorder text at a desktop telegram app and that's not the only telegram on this uh, software 
as you can configure a telegram account in the default chat apps section here if you want to next to xmpp or jabber so that's pretty great unfortunately um, one big gripe i have with the fractal app um, which is why i'm yeah hesitant to use it at all is it doesn't support encryption yet but at least it works quite well in general on the phone it fits it is well it is it has been adjusted for Fosh and Lependi. Next up is the unofficial POS port, which is basically maintained by one guy. Um, it's POS uh, by Purism is what they run on their Librem 5, which is uh, for the majority of backers still upcoming. And um, yeah, it's based on their uh, Debian fork, if you want to call it that and uh, which is um, well equal to what is in Debian Buster and this is what you get except these two Ricochet and Foxtrot are not pre-installed but you can see that the scaling is slightly different than on Mobian and this is so far my favorite oh I misspelled there and uh, yeah, Shetty is uh, SMS and XMPP only, so no Telegram there. But um, given that Telegram uh, with, this, with its cloud messaging features isn't really that useful on that XMPP bridge, or XMPP, uh, no, no, not XMPP bridge, in its purple implementation anyway, uh, I don't mind that. Um, and what I want to show here with Fosh uh, briefly is First of all, the terminal, um, which has a special um, keyboard layout, which is quite nice. Wait a moment, uh, here, that is the icon, but as you can see, there is no way to enter uh, control or alt or, you know, super or any other modifier keys. So if you need to use those, you are basically out of options here as far as I could figure out and then of course to see uh, how software that wasn't written for Wayland uh, behave uh, sometimes um, on a Wayland repository. Um, this is Foxtrot GPS it was popular uh, on the open moco and uh, stable hybrid release and well you can sort of kind of maybe use it but you really would have to adjust the scaling and so on so that's one of the drawbacks of fosh on on pure os or post market os or mobian or wherever you run it uh, right now so that's one of the downsides but aside from that i think it's quite well done the keyboard is um well the best in this uh, nascent new Linux on mobile devices space, I think. And um, they've gotten quite far. The browsers, um, well, it's based on Epiphany, so WebKit, uh, but I think it's just fine. It's not great, you know. And you can always install desktop Firefox. It will look, it will work, you know, it will be kind of weird, but. Uh, it will generally work so yeah so here and that's my blog and that's the resources page I talked about and there you can see what's going to be next and that's another one that is basically De Debian based if you count Dev1 under Debian oh wait there's one more thing that is impressive with this pure support and which I haven't seen on another distro you can uh, use the uh, sensors to to change the orientation so that's really useful especially with uh, yeah let's put on foxtrot gps again and now um, we've at least got a different part of it visible um, but yeah um, i mean if you 
ever run a uh, valent compositor like like sway or something you, you will know those issues uh those are classic x x valent issues um unfortunately i guess so yeah and maybe i'll iron out, iron out hopefully but so but now on to something that is x based and that is memolester so and here the booting Memo Lester. I like that you can see what the system is doing here because on most other distributions there's a splash screen or it's just blacked out and I always like this menus and to see oh this thing has four penguins are uh, four cores and then it's booted and slightly flickery I didn't do any updates here so yeah, but generally Wi-Fi connection can work. Got it working. And this Hilden thing is, well, at least slightly accelerated, I guess, as the application manager. But I will do a video on this soon. Um, having seen now Wi-Fi connected, um, apparently, briefly at least. Yeah, it's tough. Because then I could run this updates thing. Let's see, it's actually uh, faster on the Droid Four right now because that has apparently better graphical acceleration for now and more stable Wi-Fi. And you could also run it on the Nokia N nine hundred. Um, so far it's early days for them apparently but it boots so and it's an image from March so their progress they may have made progress since but hey another option and the great thing about this is okay no keyboard well that's that's one of the issues with this build um wait a moment um, I have to go to the settings to text input and enable it uses the virtual keyboard which well is not the best one I've ever used to be kind um, but now so see there it is <laughs> yeah I mean I So let's run top. Oh, yeah. You can see that's just 224 megabytes used, which is quite impressive. So yeah, I'm. If you think the Pine Phone is too slow, and if you want to run apps like Foxtrot GPS, which works f totally fine on my Droid, Droid 4. You can do so. See, that's Foxtrot GPS, how it's supposed to look. <laughs> like so, yeah. Um, Emo Lester, definitely interesting. So, as you can see, this is something that is already post market OS based. So, we're getting in, coming closer to the end of this video or to what it's finally about, and that is now SXMO and you log in with mo and mo here if you don't change the defaults and then um, well you get this which is like dvm or i3 or something it's of course suckless tools based of course you know why wouldn't it and then you have these scripts here and then you can like choose the camera um and see that's the camera or you can just you can now do a screenshot something yeah it's that's the surf browser now which i've also opened and because this thing is not connected to wi-fi right now 
well it's it's great it's it's really the most nerdy thing i think there is for uh, this phone currently um you can use it you have to read the manual um because otherwise you don't know which button press does what because you there's a differentiation whether you press a button once twice or twice and yeah so it's a little bit tough to figure out i think if you eventually get into it you're going to be really fast uh, I unfortunately didn't really manage to. There are also some gestures, um, which I can't get to work right now, of course. Because, yeah, um, well, ever. Just believe me, it's, it's nice, it's super nerdy, but I'm really afraid I'm going to wear out those buttons. So, therefore, I uh, will just go and try to shut it down. So let's get to Postmarketers, which is um, actually going to be shipped soon on uh, the Pinephone Postmarketers Community Edition, which is going up for pre-order in early July. And Postmarketers is, is a real Linux distribution for phones and other mobile devices. And they started out in uh, two 2017 so three years ago basically and this is a screenshot of their website and they're based on Alpine Linux or Alpine Linux I guess which is a security oriented lightweight Linux solution based on Moodle, Libsy and Busybox so not your standard GNU tool so it would be wrong to call them a GNU Linux distribution I currently booting on more than 200 devices and I think about 10 or 15 devices are quite well supported as in you can do something with them maybe not everything you'd want but something and it supports multiple graphical user interfaces so I just listed the choices you have in PM bootstrap um, for the Pinephone, which is non just terminal and frame buffer keyboard. So you have a terminal and you've got a keyboard, GNOME shell, i3vm and sway, well, uh, so uh, two, um, oh god, I'm blanking on the word, two um, tiling window managers, Kodi, which you know for media players, uh, so that would be not something for a mobile device you intend to use as a mobile device. Maybe if you are fine with using this micro HDMI out on this Droid 4, you could use it as a media player, which, I mean, that's better than throwing your phone in a landfill or giving it to recycling. Uh, then Plasma Desktop, Plasma Mobile, which I have here, Shelly, which is something custom, and Western. Western is this experimental Wayland compositor, which you may know. So. This is Postmarket OS with Plasma Mobile. Uh, it's the version where there are a ton of apps pre-installed. You've got a choice with just a few apps or more apps. And yeah, you kind of can tell from the icons, which are not looking too great actually, what these apps are for, but you sometimes have to just know it. So this is a music player wave. And then Trojita is, I don't know why that icon is there twice, is the mail client, which isn't totally mobile optimized, I would say, but hey, it, it works. So what's the other icon? Yeah. Um, so you have to set it up first. Okula is uh, the Plasma desktop PDF reader, which has uh, Qt Quick UI 2, so yeah, this is the multitasking screen by the way. I unfortunately don't have any PDFs on this thing. Spacebar is a chat application. Kaidan, I think, seems to be something similar. Um, And so on. Now, there are quite some applications, and so there was some brouhaha on Reddit when the 
PostMarketOS PinePhones Community Edition was announced. Um, by the way, that's kind of ironic uh, because uh, you get a phone pre-installed with PostMarketOS, which doesn't really make a ton of sense, but yeah, it's I think that's cool. <laughs> so uh, as you can see, I'm way less familiar with this uh, Plasma Mobile interface. I think those icons here are well, not that beautiful. And in general, I had difficult experiences. A couple of days ago, the browser wouldn't work at all. Let me just take a second take. So I've been trying to uh, connect this to Wi-Fi and apparently uh, in this build of PostMarket OS, which I did just earlier today, I can't get into the settings menu, so I have no graphical user interface to connect to a Wi-Fi network, which is quite sad. Um, uh, otherwise, as you can see, there are some, you know, Boohoo is a Note app, or Bahoo, and Nota is a Note app, and Ktrip is for organizing trips. Kaidan is some kind of messaging app, and yeah, th so there's already duplication and it's kind of buggy. I mean, I can try to start the camera, but it doesn't work on anywhere except SXMO, I think, yet. So it's kind of pointless. Multitasking view is quite nice, um, but in general, I think uh, this really still needs some work by the community. So, most notably, I mean, I can't do anything useful here on the keyboard, uh, on, in terminal either, because I can't do an update or something, because I'm not connected to any network. So, but um, look at this. So. This key is not a shift key, it's a cap lock, caps lock key, which really drove me almost nuts when I tried another build of this where I could enter the Wi-Fi password. So I have to say um, I, I can understand Postmarket OS's decision to go with Osh for the community edition because you can always uh, then go on and install Plasma Mobile if you like to. So it's just what it comes with and you would naturally go with whatever works less because now this bar is gone as you can see. The switcher bar and you have to go there so then it's back. Uh, I don't know. This is well really even more buggy than Fosh is. And Fosh is still pretty buggy too. Let's see how buggy Fosh is. Next. So that's PostMarket OS with Fosh. And here I'm entering my super secure disk encryption password. I have that on the Plasma one as well. So yeah, now PostMarket OS is loading. This is first boot two. I hope I will be able to connect to the Wi-Fi network here um, while not showing you my Wi-Fi password. By the way, that's a good thing about using this Pine phone with tons of OSs because there are some I haven't shown here. Like uh, I think I mentioned Nemo Mobile earlier and Luno OS because they really did not work well for me at all. <laughs> but um, um, I'm now able to type my quite long Wi-Fi password from memory because I had to type it in so often because you know there are tons of things 
uh, tons of s s distributions you're trying out and and you're trying out multiple on one SD card for example then you will have to reconfigure everything you try out a distribution you tried out before again that's why I got a real pile of SD cards over there right now so that I don't have to do that all the time but in general oh my god this is so boring I'm sorry but my Wi-Fi password is really quite long I hope I didn't mistype so looks like it's connecting yes it's connected so yeah um with uh that's the chats app we've seen before on mobian and pos and here you can add your jabber account i tried that but it didn't really work for me unfortunately um a couple of days ago maybe just an issue with the daily build because this is of course the edge channel because well one would want to be on the edge with this right um and this is the terminal again as we've seen before so let's see if there are any update dates that's the command on post market now I have to enter my super secret password here and it's downloading and says hey there are some packages available and if I want to upgrade that I have to run this I think yeah so there are some upgrades even very nice new version of Fosh and Fock so despite me building this image today there were some it's interesting so let's see whether the pro program i tried before is available in post market oh god foxtrot so you can see that keyboard isn't perfect but i think it's it's fine, you know. Don't have to be super, super duper hypercritical. Um, as it's, after all, still early days with the Pine Phone and with Forge and all that. So let's see. So I installed it. And now it's here, ready to be launched. And see, different, different scaling issue, but still a scaling issue. And yeah, so I will just quit that. But as you can see, I think Postmark OS is really even faster than POS is on this hardware um, because it's so minimal with that Moozle C library and Busybox. GNOME software, last time I tried, it doesn't really work. Let's see, oh, that doesn't fix the scaling because that's a trick with uh, Fosh. Sometimes you just go at it again and then the scaling is fine. Let's see how Epiphany does. Yeah. There we go. Let's see if my blog is loading, but I suppose it is. At least I hope that. Maybe there's some WebKit stuff currently broken again. Yeah, there are sometimes breakages. Um, now, of course, uh, you can also on post market uh, go ahead and oh my god that I opened too many applications here which can happen 
I just tapping somewhere and it hasn't rendered yet so okay and that was the wrong command anyway um, sorry for that and here you go it's installed in Firefox There's one dependency which is lib event or lib event, I don't know. So, yeah, um, and now we've got two Firefox icons, and luckily the terminal is still there because earlier I uh, tried to uh, use Postmarket and I would install Firefox, so that's um, I don't know, like two weeks ago, right? And uh, then the terminal was gone all of a sudden. But that's pretty great uh, when you uh, use PM Bootstrap with um, Postmarket because you can have it add your computer's SHH key in there so that you can really SSH and easily you just connect it via cable uh, look for the IP address it's I didn't remember it's I think it's 172 46 something something but um, it generally works and here see my website's loading in desktop Firefox on a smartphone isn't that something? And even pinch to zoom works. That's quite nice. Let's go to that resources page here. And yeah, so let's just go to Postmarket OS. Website and there you go. Postmarket OS org. They also have my matrix and IC channels, and it's quite a nice community, as far as I can tell. So um, I think if you didn't manage to order a UB Ports community edition of the Pine Phone, um, you should definitely consider going for the Postmarket OS Community Edition because it has a nice logo as far as I'm concerned on the back side and uh, it's quite a nice project and so they really deserve those 10 euros just like UB Ports does um, but uh, I think it's it's really cool what they're doing so let's just have a look at the devices here and well, main devices unfortunately right now are only the emulators, QEMU emulators, but there are quite some community supported devices. So the BQ Aquarix, Aquarix X5 apparently is supported, which is pretty cool because I have one of those, so I will try that out soon. Didn't even know that. And um, yeah some older Samsung Galaxy phones, the Moto G4 Play, the Nokia N900, uh, a Mimo Pad, tablet by Asus, and of course the Purism Librem 5 is going to be supported as well, or is supported, but it's really tough right now to get your hands on that hardware. Yeah. So, and that's the long list of testing hardware yeah? in very various different stages of support and some non-booting devices so yeah people have really tried to run this thing on quite a lot of devices because you have to consider uh, some people may have just tried it and never bothered to document their failures so they wouldn't appear in this wiki so yeah I think Postmarket OS on the Pine phone is going to be fine. 
they will work on fixing some of the remaining bugs that certainly are until um, so that they will have a great shipping release on those pine phones in the, in the, of the community edition and yeah I think I rambled far too much here so I will just thank you for listening and watching and uh, make sure to have a look at my Twitter because I posted quite a lot of photos of my pine phone running something there early on feedback is welcome so if there's some software project on the pine phone or other linux hardware like this guy here that you'd like to see please uh, write it in the comments or tag me on twitter i'm also linmob on reddit so you can catch me there if you want to too and i'm going to set up an account on mastodon my email is on my blog linmob.net uh, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.